Good morning. We're here for the one year Bible study back at our regular time of 9 o'clock a.m. Central Standard Time. <clears throat> We're on October the 3rd, reading in uh, Jeremiah. We started Jeremiah yesterday in our reading, and um, we're in Jeremiah chapters 1 and 2 today. And what a word from God we have. I just, I just love it, love it, love it. You know, um, if you've been following along with me, I say some pretty bold things. Uh, just in the past week, I've referred to um, the fact that uh, God has created all of us for a purpose and for a reason, and that we all have a destiny that we're working towards. It's a God-given des destiny. And... Um, the only way I've got to know the things that I know about God that gives me comfort that I can stand on, the absolutes that I can stand on, is um, by reading his word. God speaks to us all the time. He's always talking to us. He's our father. He loves us. He gives us that example because he, he knew that we could understand how much we love our children and it would be the closest thing he could give us to how much to getting us to understand how much he loves us. We still don't get uh, fathom it. I mean, we're just not able to comprehend just how much God loves each one of us. But he, but he gave us the ability to have children uh, so that we would get a glimpse into the, the level of love that he has for us. And um, he's always speaking to us. I don't doubt one second that God's talking to me all day long, every single day, and I believe his spirit is speaking to my spirit all through the night when, when we're asleep. Uh, and how do I know that? I know that because, first of all, he's told it to me. I don't believe there's a revelation knowledge if he's not spoken it to me. And then he gave us this book. He wrote, he, he had it all written down for us to confirm what he's been speaking to us over and over and over again. I, I believe that God tells us stories. I believe that um, he's the greatest storyteller that there was because um, Jesus told stories and Jesus spoke to us in stories. And um, why would Jesus tell us stories if it wasn't what his father did? In fact, Jesus' own words is that he only said what his, he, what his father said and he only did what he saw his father do. So God's telling the story. So he gave us a book of stories. Um, God knows everything from the beginning to the end, because with God, I don't believe there is a beginning and an end, so time doesn't mean anything to God, uh, except that he created our timeline for us, and so he's speaking to us all the time, and a great deal of what he's speaking to, the majority of what he's speaking to us is what's contained in, the, in this book. From cover to cover, he's telling us these stories from cover to cover, He's telling us what we need to know for our life. He's given us historical experiences to build on. And he's uh, preparing us for the destiny he created for each one of us. And every one of us have a purpose planted inside of us that we, only we can fulfill. I believe that with all my heart. Why do I believe it? Because he's spoken it to me. I've heard from him that he's got a plan for me. He's got a He's got a purpose. I'm, I'm, I know that I know that I know a huge portion of my purpose is to help hurting people. I know that. And, and there's a destiny. And, and this morning, I said all of that to lead up to today's reading. Today's reading, October the 3rd in Jeremiah chapter 1. Now, Jeremiah was one of the greatest prophets that ever was born, and he was a prophet for 42 years. He, he reigned uh, in his prophetic office uh, for 42 years, and he ended up being stoned to death. You know, and when I think about that alone, I, I think about standing there and watching people raise the rocks that I know is going to hurt, to hurl at me. And I think about people like Jeremiah that stood that test. 
I, I think a lot about those 12 that in the past year or so was marched out onto that sandy beach um, because they were professing Christians and they professed Jesus Christ. This is, this is in our current events in the last year. Uh -oh. I want you to understand what I'm talking about. I transitioned from biblical historical text when Jeremiah was stoned into a real life event that's happened in the last few months where they took 12 people and marched him out on a sandy beach and told him to denounce Jesus Christ. And when they refused to do that, they raised their bayonets and they beheaded them. Real life today events. And I think about things like that and know that I know that I want to so be so grounded in my faith, so grounded in the love of my heavenly father that I could stand in those moments as the rocks are being raised to stone me to death, as the bayonets being raised to cut my head off or, or to cut off the heads of my children. Wow. Wow. Anyway, um, I, I, I thought of that as we started the book of Jeremiah. I think of it a lot because that's part of the destiny. I believe God has prepared for me that I'll stand for truth and his truth is the only truth. There is only one truth and it's his truth. So anyway, we're talking about that destiny and we're talking about that purpose and that knowing that we're created for a purpose, knowing that there's a work that God has created just for us to do and how I know that. And I started off telling you because he speaks it to me and then he wrote it down for me. And right here on October the 3rd of 2016, Jeremiah chapter one, verse, let's just start, start in verse four. Now the word of the Lord came to me. Now this is Jeremiah uh, speaking. Now the word of the Lord came to me saying, behold, I formed you in the womb, I knew you. And before you were born, I consecrated you. I appointed you a prophet to the nations. And it's just like those words are exactly written for me. And they were. They were written for me. They're written for you. They're written for everybody. Uh, everybody that is God's. All of the believers. Before God formed you in the womb, he knew you. And before you were born, God consecrated you. Now, what does consecration mean? It means that he set you apart. He set you apart for a purpose and for a, a work. And it, it, it doesn't stop there. It doesn't stop there. I mean, if, if it stopped there, it was good enough that he knew us before he ever formed us in the womb. And that before we were born, he set us apart for him. Then it goes on and says, then I said, oh, Lord God, behold, I do not know how to speak. I mean, when you get a word like this from God, it takes your breath away. It just, it puts you in awe of God. For I am only a youth. So now Jeremiah is telling him that he's, he's just a babe. He's young. I've got Austin on here and I've got Rachel on here that's in their teens. And I'm so excited that they join us on our our Bible studies in the morning time. What a message for Austin and for Rachel this morning, for each one of us. It doesn't matter where you're at in your walk in life. It does not matter how old you are. These words are for you. But the Lord said to me, now get this, get this. Okay, so he just told Jeremiah that he knew him before he formed him in the womb. There's so much truth in that. First of all, it tells us without a doubt that it is God who created us. It is God who formed us. He formed us. He knew us before he formed us in the womb. And he consecrated us before we were born. And in awe, Jeremiah speaks back and says, oh, Lord, I don't even know what to say. So he doesn't know what to say. And then what does he say? He says, but I'm just a youth. He can't use me. I'm too young. I'm too young. Um, Surely you don't have something just for me because I'm just a youth. And this is God's answer back to him. Do not say I am only a youth. For to all to whom I send you, you shall go. And whatever I command you, you shall speak. Do not be afraid of them. 
for I am with you to deliver you, declares the Lord. What excuses are you using? Well, I'm too old. Well, you know, I've just messed up too many times in my life. I, I just, I missed it. I just, there's too many times in my life that I, uh, I didn't obey God. I, I, you know, I've, I've gone too far the wrong direction. I've created too much chaos in my life. I've made too many mistakes. God can't use me. And he's saying to you, he's saying to you, whatever excuse you're using, Jeremiah's excuse was, is that he's just too young. Whatever excuse you're using, he's telling you, do not even say it anymore. I'll tell you what, this spoke directly to me over how I felt about doing these videos and the reluctance I've had. <laughs> and, and if you've been with me, you know that I've, I've just felt like God in the last few months has told me to get over myself. Well, it was a lot stronger today than simply just get over yourself. You know, do not say whatever that excuse is. Do not say, Jeremiah, that you're only a youth. Don't use that excuse with me anymore. How many times have you guys said that to your own children? Don't you say that anymore. That's what he's telling you. Don't you say that excuse anymore. It's just an excuse. Um, for to all to whom I send you, you shall go. And wherever I command you, you shall speak. Do not be afraid of them. It's just fear. And it's silly pride. It's a combination of fear and it's a combination of pride is all it is. And that's exactly what he's telling him. Then the Lord put out his hand and touched my mouth. This is Jeremiah speaking. So he spoke. Jeremiah's in awe. Jeremiah gives him an excuse. He said, oh, but I'm just a youth. He gets reprimanded. Don't you say that to me anymore. And then God just reaches down and touches Jeremiah's mouth. Well, I got news for you. He's just reached down and he's just touched your mouth. And the Lord said to me, behold, I have put my words in your mouth. See, I have set you this day over nations and kingdoms to pluck up and to break down, to destroy and overthrow, to build and to plant. You want to know how I know there's a purpose in every one of us? Do you want to know how I know that <laughs> there's a purpose for me, Elizabeth Inman, in all of the mistakes I've made, all the bad things that happened in my life early on, the bad choices I made. I can't blame them on anybody. They were my choices. You want to know how I know he still wants to uh, do a work in me? He still has work for me to do. It's in black and white. And if you look, I've highlighted it in green. I mean, it really spoke to me. It really, really speaks to me. And he's speaking to you with those words. And then he goes on to say, and the word of the Lord came to me saying, Jeremiah, what do you see? And I said, I see an almond branch. Then the Lord said to me, you have seen well, for I am watching over my word to perform it. This doesn't have anything to do with any mistakes I've made. I was consecrated before I was ever born. You were consecrated before you were ever born. It doesn't have anything to do with how many times you've missed it, how many times you've failed. It simply is the purpose that God placed inside of you before he ever formed you. In uh, verse 17, <clears throat> but you dress yourself for work, arise and say to them everything that I command you. I, I mean, we want to know what we're supposed to be doing. Just open up the book. Just open up your spiritual ears to hear. He's speaking to you. Do not be dismayed by them, lest I dis dismay you before them. And I behold, I make you this day a fortified city. He makes you a fortified city. What does that mean? That means that he's building you up and fortifying you. He is putting in you the stamina you need, the in energy you need, the courage you need. Whatever is on your list of I don't have, he's fortifying in you. It's his job to fortify you. It's your job to submit to him so he can fortify you. An iron pillar and bronze walls against the whole land, anything coming against you, what's your enemy? He's fortifying you against the kings of Judah, its officials, its priests, and the people of the land. 
They will fight against you. Oh, yes, opposition will come. When you step out finally and say, God, I've messed up everything there is to mess up in my life. I want to do it your way. Opposition will come. But they shall not prevail against you. <laughs> he just takes away all of our excuses. I mean, he warns us and tells us opposition will come. But that's why so many times I'll say, yeah, well, I've read the end of the book. I win. We win. As believers, we win. Yeah, opposition comes. Yes, opposition is hard. Yes, persecution is hard. It's not easy when things are going wrong in your life. But we win. They will not prevail against you. But they shall not prevail against you. For I am with you declares the Lord to deliver you. Hallelujah. I mean, I could stop right there. Um, I could, oh my gosh, I could stop right there. I mean, wow, we win. We win. We win. Woo, hallelujah. And then he goes on as if that wasn't enough for our daily reading. Um, he goes into Philippians. Philippians chapter 4, the book of joy. Uh, the book written in prison by Paul, where 17 different times he speaks of joy, he speaks of uh, rejoicing, and today's no, ex no exception. Um, let's just start reading in verse 4. Rejoice in the Lord always. He's in prison when he writes this, folks. You know, it's Monday morning, and how many of you guys are guilty of waking up saying, oh, it's Monday, start of another week? Paul woke up Monday morning and says, rejoice in the Lord always, and he was in prison. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I will say, rejoice. <laughs> what more do we need? He's in prison, and he's telling us to rejoice. Let your reasonableness be known to everyone. The Lord is at hand. Do not be anxious about anything. My precious daughter's on here. I love her. I love her. And he's, he's got a word for you. Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything, by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. You go against what God has for you. You go against the path he has for you, and your mind will be tormented. Just the opposite of what he's saying here. If this is truth, let your requests be made, to go, made, be made, <laughs> let your requests be made, made known to God, and the peace of God that surpasses understanding will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus then if we, if we don't pray, we don't let our requests be made to known, if we don't submit and let him be Lord and Savior of our life, then you can just bet that your mind will be torment. You'll have torment. Finally, brothers, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is commendable, if there is any excellence, if, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> <coughs> Gonna start that over again. <coughs> Finally, brothers, the people that can hear my voice right now, whatever is true, <coughs> whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is commendable, if there is any excellence, if there is anything worthy of praise, think about these things. We can change our thoughts by allowing the Holy Spirit of God to come in and renew our minds. And when the enemy comes against us, we turn it back on him and we think on these things. It's one of the greatest tools in this in this word right here for us to overcome obstacles is to turn our thoughts on a dime. We can just in a, in the flash in the, in the, in the um, twinkling of an eye and that fast, that fast, we can say, no, I'm not going there in my thoughts. If, if you're struggling today, let me tell you what to do today. You make a list 
of all of the things that's tormenting you? What is it that's stealing your joy? What is it that's stealing your peace? You make this list on a piece of paper that you can get rid of. You're not going to keep it. You make this list. And then on the other side, on a different piece of paper, you write down a positive statement about that. Um, I, um, I don't think there's enough money to pay the bills this month. Thank God I've got all of the resources I need to meet my needs. Thank God that he opened the treasures of heaven for me. That's what I'm doing here. It's whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is commendable. If there's any excellence, if there's anything worthy of praise, think about these things. I force myself to get away from the negativity and I think about the positive things. I think about the things that are lovely, the things that are pure. That's why a grateful journal is so powerful. <clears throat> Writing down the things that we're grateful for is a very, very powerful tool that we have. I've got some connectivity problems on Facebook. I wanna wait just a second because I want you to be able to get this. Bear with me. When persecution comes, we stand. Okay, we're back. We were back. Okay, we're back. This is, this is what I want you to do. This is why a, a grateful journal is so powerful. You're struggling with your thoughts. You're struggling with depression. You're struggling keeping your mind set on the things that are above, not beneath. Just get out, break out a, a grateful journal. Write down everything you have to be grateful about. I've talked about it many times in these, in these uh, Bible studies. And, and the reason I know to do that is it's not an original idea with Elizabeth. It's not an original idea with your therapist. It's not an original idea, uh, idea with a psychologist. It came from God to do this. Whatever things are pure, whatever things are lovely, whatever things are just, think on these things. What you have learned and received and heard and seen in me, practice these things. And the God of peace will be with you. Wow. Wow. This is exactly why I get so excited about reading his word every single day. It doesn't matter what problem I have, what problem I'm facing, what problem the people around me are facing. There's an answer for it in his word. God is the answer. And so we talked about some powerful things today. Um, <clears throat> I, 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 I just almost get speechless. I mean, I'm like Jeremiah. I'm in awe of God. And I've read these things. But that's one of the things about reading through the Bible cover to cover once a year is I don't, I don't skip over anything. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have all these reminders at least once a year, at least once a year. It doesn't take the place of my study time. I've got to study. I, I need to dig in and I got to find, you know, if, if I'm having trouble with my thoughts, do a, do a Bible study on thoughts. Uh, do a Bible study on renewing your mind. If you're having trouble with finances, then do, a, do a, a study on finances. If you're having trouble with your marriage, then do a Bible study on marriage. If you're having trouble with your children, it, whatever, you, you get what I'm saying? Whatever struggles you're having, do a Bible study on that. But Read through the Bible every year, and you'll be reminded of every promise that's in here. And I've heard it said that there's over 6,000 promises in this word. It, it'll just, it's the adrenaline I need to just keep going. That's all I can say. It's the adrenaline I need. And I thank you for joining me. It, thank you, thank you, thank you. I love our little chats together. Uh, we're back at 9 o'clock Central Time on your Facebook Live. I think there's a place where you can hit subscribe. I'm learning this stuff definitely on on YouTube, um, on my channel, you can subscribe. That way you'll be notified anytime we do go live. Uh, I will be doing some more traveling in the month of October. We'll uh, deviate from the schedule again. Um, but for now and for this week, we're at 9 o'clock a.m. Central Time, and I'm thrilled to be back. I'm thrilled to be with you guys, and thank you guys for chatting with me. We'll chat again real soon.